don't think you guys are ready for this. This is an apology song. Apologies accepted, yeah! What's up, you beautiful people? Welcome to Sunday with Ola 107. Zero mistakes in the premiere, hello? At least I hope so. <laughs> First, before I begin... I don't know if it's Let's just hope for that. Hopefully I'm f***ing crisp. This is not crisp. This, this has... do has to be done. Do has to be done, my friend and my fräulein. Oh... Oh, more... Focus. Okay, great. Some of the things that people aren't seeing when I recorded Sunday with Ola. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the outtakes. Before I start this week's Swola, I just want to apologize for last week's slight slight incident just like with every sunday with ola you know we gather on the sunday at 8 a.m cet central european time to watch the thing together and we can chat and have a good time and all and we did last week too the problem didn't come clear until the video started and i saw that everything was out of sync people might say that youtube is the culprit in this it's not YouTube, okay? It was basically an error in Final Cut Pro. So me and my editor had been uh, dealing with a bunch of exporting issues this whole past weekend. Uh, I got in on the Saturday trying to fix them late evening and I fought. I fixed it. So I exported the file, uploaded it to YouTube. That, that should be it, right? I went to an awesome party with my friends. You know, there was bands in the living room and, you know, I was drinking for once. You know, that, that rarely happens. But I was drinking, I was having a good time. You know, I came back home in the middle of the night, like pretty early still, like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. I got a text from my translator guy uh, when I got back home in the middle of the night. A little bit drunk. Uh, might I say that? Uh, he was saying that the video was a little glitchy, so he'll, he's gonna try and translate it later. And that's completely fine. And I just went to bed. Happy. And then we were sitting there in the premiere next morning, and uh, I panicked, basically. In my pajama pants and my flip-flops, I sat in the car and drove here to fix the video. And within one hour, I managed to re-upload the video and then YouTube, you know, does their sketchy thing with the processing and all. But within two hours, the sun would follow us up and it was fine. So we missed out on the premiere. I'm incredibly sorry for that. Uh, that's a very big piece and part of the whole Sunday with Ola experience for a lot of people. So I understand that. So I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. And you know what the fun thing is? I made an apology video in my closet back home and that video outperformed my recent 10 videos in terms of views. <laughs> so, what's up with you guys? You don't want to watch Swola, you just want to see me do an apology video. And since that apology video got so many views, and you know, the regular Swola got so many views, I've decided that from today, I will f up every Sunday with Swola. How about that? No, that's not gonna happen. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously kidding. I'm not the guy to make clickbaity tiles, but um, uh, apparently that apology video had a clickbaity tile. The premiere died. What's up? I don't understand how you guys work. You, you, you guys were, you guys just want to see chaos. You want to see when people like me are f***ing up, basically. Good. Getting that out of the way. Ha! Let's go to the news, baby. And we're starting off with Zach Wild that he has yet to learn how to play Pantera songs for upcoming tour. What day is it today? It's the 23rd of October, uh, ending of October. They have the show starting early December. He has about one month and a couple days to learn the Pantera set list. 
Not me neither. What? Shut up. In a new interview with the SDR show, the Aussie Osborne guitarists who say he was beyond honored to be filling Dimebag Daryl's monumental shoes during the trek earlier this year, explains I don't know how to play the songs. <laughs> if Dime had to play Aussie, No More Tears solo, Mama I'm Coming Home, Miracle Man, Perry Mason and Black Label Society's Suicide Messiah, he'd be like, you must know Zach's stuff. He would be like, no, I don't know any of his stuff. Zach's my buddy, but no, I don't know any of his stuff. Yeah, some people might be freaked out about this. I mean, these are incredibly big shoes to fill, you know, with Zach stepping into Dimebag's role in the Pantera tribute concerts that are gonna happen. But at the same time, you have to remember that Zach's shoes are also very big. He's a professional guitar player. I have no doubt about it. He's gonna fing rock that shit. And he's gonna do it really well. I mean, it's Zach Wild. He's one of the best guitar players in the world. Have you ever went to a Zach Wild show? He's playing like alternate picking for like 15 minutes while he's going out in the audience and you know banging chicks and kissing. No, he's not banging chicks, but he's he's hitting people in the face while alternate picking. Uh, and people go like, eh, and there's the security. He's like, no, 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 don't touch this alternate picking. But you know, he's incredible. And also rehashing what Grady Champion said uh, in regards of being asked to join this uh, Pantera tribute thing. Uh, for all the people I've ghosted and everyone else who's interested, I'm doing this thing, uh, Champion Road. I signed on for the Pantera tour. Rita Haney has allowed me access to some of Dime's gear and I'm bringing it for Zach. I'm not his tech, he has a badass one, long time one, he continued. The plan for now is for me to run effects and help bring Dime's tone to the party. So, Zach doesn't have to worry anything about the actual tone aspect of this whole Pantera tribute. He can just concentrate on learning the songs. Grady will be there to pull in that whammy during Becoming. He doesn't have to worry about a thing. Next piece of news. Oh, look, it's Andy James. Man, it's Andrew James. I'm just still so happy that Andy James joined Five Finger Death Punch. Like, Andy James, incredible shredder. He's been a hard working guy. And now he's playing with one of the biggest fing metal bands in the world. That's pretty fing amazing. I'm so happy for Andy James. Anyways, Drunk Driver knocks out power and Five Finger Death Punch show early. Whoa! <laughs> Please don't drink and drive. Five Finger Death Punch only got to play eight songs during their October 15th show at the USA Amphitheater in West Valley City, Utah? What? Is that you, you, you utensils? According to guitarist Sultan Baffery, a drunk driver hit the transformer down the road and unfortunately knocked the power out. Salt Lake City started as an incredible show with 20,000 fans. I need to use this voice too. Uh, Salt Lake City started as an incredible show with 20,000 fans. This was going off when a drunk driver hit a transformer down the road and knocked out the power for the whole area. One more reason to not drink and drive. You screwed up. 20,000 people stay. Or depending how you look at things, he did 20,000 people a favor. <laughs> no, obviously not. That's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, that sucks. Incredible ass. Also, when we're talking the subject of Five Finger Death Punch, I said it like it was a drink. Five Finger Death Punch. Oh, shit. That's an alternate name. Maybe the, the cover band of Five Finger Death Punch is Five Finger Death Punch. You know, it's the drink. Anyways, Ivan Moody to retire from Mel after one more Five Finger Death Punch album. During the band's October 14th. Okay, the day before their uh, gig was cut short, uh, Moody told the crowd that he plans to do one more Five Finger Death Punch record and then hang it up as a metal musician. Whether he continues on in another genre is known just yet, though he does mention in the speak that he wants to spend more time with his, ki with his kids. Which honestly is one of the best reasons to retire and I full heartedly agree with that. I, I thought it was about him becoming a, a comedian or something like that, but uh, if it's for the kids, fuck yeah man. I wanted to tell you this and nobody else in the world knows. Denver, so this is where it's going to start and what you you do with it is up to you. The last 15 years of my life, I have toured the world. I've seen every country, every city on this planet at least twice. That's a fact. And through that time, as many of your parents know, I have missed a lot of time with my kiddos. So I made them a deal today and I'm going to stick to it. After this year, I'm going to make one more Five Finger Death Punch album and then I'm retiring from heavy metal. Anyways, kudos to Ivan for uh, taking a step back because of the kids. I totally respect that. Now, what's going to happen with Five Finger Death Punch or Five Finger Death Punch? Who's gonna sing? 
All right, watch Megadeth's Dave Mustaine shows of his live tour rig featuring Seymour Duncan's Power Stage 700. You might think, why is this something you will watch all that? Well, the thing is that it is actually a really good video. Because when I saw the article, I was like, okay, I know that the guys are using quad cortexes, but I would imagine at least them using, you know, two power amps or something to connect to their cabinets that they have on stage. But apparently they're using solid state power amplifiers. Look at that plethora of quad cortexes right there. How many? Is that four or is it like eight? I can't see because, you know, my screen is so f***ing shitty. No, it's just really, you know, I cough and I burp and, you know, it's all on there. Streamline everything and, and keep it nice and tight. I understand this, but they're using like f***ing 40 cabinets on stage. I bet that the 40 cabinets is something that they, they, they just rent when they travel to Europe and they just bring their uh, rigs over here. That is just my little uh, guess right there. And they're also saying that they're a big advocate of using cabs on stage and uh, I completely agree with this. I've been on stages where there's no cabs when I'm playing. There's just something of having something behind you, like pushing you forward. Like for me at least, when the audio is pushing you towards the audience. Uh, and that's what like a full stack of, of cabinets can do for you. It's just that extra little, mm, you know, you're playing live kind of feeling. When you don't have cabinets, you don't really get that. You have the in-ears, I still have in-ears, but I still want to have the cabinet behind me because it's a force, you know. Anyway, I thought this was a pretty cool video. You can check out uh, Dave, uh, Dave Mustaine and Megadeth's guitar rig, what they're using live. What's the name of the presets? I want to know. It then goes on to our neural... DM main rhythm. Look how simple that signal path is right there. So they're using... Uh, okay, I can see what they're doing right here. They have uh, the preamp and the noise gate and you know all of that, like a wah or something or volume. And then they have an EQ and then a cabinet, but they also split off after the amplifier and go to a stereo. So they're basically... Uh, they're going direct probably to front of house, but they're also going this extra route right there out to the power amps and cabinets. So they have uh, two options basically. So my guess is that they're probably uh, routing out the direct tone on the quad corex out to the PA, but the other path right there is just for the monitoring aspect of things. Slight little guess, or they mic it up and they can mix and match a little bit. How about that? All right, before we end the news, and I usually don't do this, but I want to give you guys a gamer tip. And especially not in the news segment, because that doesn't make any sense. Uh, no, but I'm going to give you a gaming tip of a really good game I have been playing lately. It's called Scorn, and you know... I usually don't push games in my videos because, you know, this is not a gaming channel. It's a music channel. But I assure you, this is such a cool f***ing game and it's just completely up my alley. It has this H.R. Geiger uh, vibe to it. It's wet, it's disgusting, it's alien-ish. And it's puzzles and shit and you blood and, and, and it's, it's disgusting. And it's a really kick-ass game. I'm playing it right now. It's... Mm, man. So that's my little tip for this week. This game fucking rocks. And I think it's like 30 bucks. I think it's on Game Pass or something like that if you're into Game Passes. But it's 35 euros to get it. And uh, for me, it was absolutely worth it just to get the, the, the atmosphere of, you know, alien. And, mm, I'm a big fan of that. Do you want to have more gaming tips or should I just knock that shit out? Let me know in the comment section. Maybe we can have a poll in the premiere. That might not even happen because, you know, I already f***ed up this Sunday with all that premiere. Ha! Okay. That was the news, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> guitar of the day. Look at this. I mean, a lot of you guys have already seen this guitar uh, a bunch of times. But you know what? There's new subscribers as well. And maybe... They have no idea what uh, guitar this is. So I figured let's bring it up because it's absolutely one of my favorite guitars. I have a lot of emotional value when it comes to this Ibanez universe. It's an Ibanez universe, by the way. Steve I, that's Steve I's signature right there. It's one of the first seven strings I owned. Not this one in particular, but I had an exact one like this back in the day. And I used it with my band's uh, subside and whatnot. And it was my favorite seven string guitar. And uh, I regretted selling it. I never found it again, but I found this one 
that I got uh, through a trade. And as you can see, the difference between the gems and the universes were that uh, the universes were seven string, obviously, but also that the universe had the pyramid inlays and, you know, the gems, they have the floral inlays. So uh, I don't know how it is right now. Maybe they've changed this because I think I've seen some six strings with the pyramids on it now. So I'm not sure. That's at least back in the day how they would differentiate a little bit. You can see back there, that's the serial number. It's from 1990 right there. Steve, I also signed it at the back at the headstock March 2018 when I was in Norway and I got to uh, ride a taxi with him for two hours. I remember with this guitar that the nut is loose. <gasps> It's loose, yo, well, it's loose. What? No, but it's actually staying in place by the strings. So the strings are holding the nut down in position. The thing is that it's really hard to get a proper part for this. Look at this. You can actually look straight through. There's no screws at the back. Hey, yeah. Hey. The newer universes or the reissues of the universe don't have the same locking nut as this one or the same fixture. So it's really hard to find parts like this. I always hated the DiMarzio strap. It's to have it easy to like kind of lock off and on your guitar. I just don't like it because it, you know, it's always like this. It's dinging the guitar basically. Uh, just not a fan. But because it's a Steve Vai thing, he always used those. I mean, hello. Oh shit, I can see now the bridge is completely raised. It's supposed to be more like this, but it's angled forward a little bit. It's been on the wall for too long. Let's plug it in. Oh shit, today I'm playing uh, Jerry Cantarell. He's a, uh, it's the guitar player of Alice and Beard. Even though the bridge is angled upwards, it's actually sort of in tune, okay. <laughs> Shit, that sounds pretty brutal, man. It's the Jerry Cantarell. That's a mushroom in Swedish. <laughs> that's why it's so funny for Swedes. Anyways, that's the Ibanez Universe PWH for you right there. It's a classic of mine. I'm so happy that I got a chance to meet up with Steve I and have him sign the guitar. I mean, take a look at that. Isn't that a, like a piece of work right there, that signature? Maybe that's something I need to work on, make my signature look like a painting, basically. So cool. So there you go. That's guitar of the week right there. Question of the day, the segment where my beautiful YouTube members get to ask me questions and I get to answer them. If you want to become a YouTube member, you can push the join button below, but you, you don't really get anything from that. It's just you join, you pay and you get to you know, go into the Discord where I hang all day and that's basically it. You get a... Uh, uh, no, don't become a member. It sucks. <laughs> anyway, the question of the day is from Nicholas Saul. Let's check it out. Hey Ola. Uh, so, my question for you is, uh, what do you think about the new Lamb of God album? Thank you for your answer, man. Bye. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Yes, I have been listening to the new Lamb of God album, uh, Omens. And actually, this morning, I listened to it while I was working out. And yes, I did still work out. You know, two weeks ago, I tried to work out to Slipknot's new album. It didn't go that well. It was it's, it's a little soft. However, the new Lamb of God Omens album is easy to work out to. I'm gonna be completely honest, this is probably one of the best sounding Lab of God albums to this day in my opinion. I can definitely get used to hearing Art Cruz on the drums other than, you know, Willie Adler who's the original drummer. Uh, you know, the drum production is different because of this obviously. There's gonna be a big difference uh, in drum sound and drum tone. And I think this has elevated Lamb of God a little bit to I mean, it took away a little bit of the uniqueness of their sound, but it gave them an overall better production, in my opinion. And I thoroughly enjoy this album. There's a lot of really good riffs, there's solos, Randy's f***ing killing it on the vocals, maybe a tad too many zeros, you know, the zeros on the, the bottom string. You know, that's basically what I've got a riff like there. It's like, it's a lot of zeros on there. But, you know, it's the, it wasn't getting boring. 
or anything. So I definitely recommend checking out the new Lamb of God album. Album tips! Lamb of God omens. It's great. All right, my ladies and gents and uh, husbands and uh, fuckwits. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you so much. That was Sunday with Ola for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support what I'm doing, you can get a t-shirt from olanglandshop.com. You can still become a YouTube member. You can come chat with me in Discord and shit like that. I'm in there every day in the voice chat. So if you have a question for me, you can just join the YouTube membership and you can go in there and ask me uh, in person, basically. Thank you so much to everyone that was in the premiere. Team No Sleep, you guys rock. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Zero mistakes.